Hello, and welcome back to the Battle Plans Podcast. So, today we're going to be talking about the twin battles of Jenna, Gina, and Osterdit. Um, so, the battles were fought on October the 14th, 1806 AD, between Napoleon's France army and the alliance of Saxony and Prussia. Um, so, just a little background on these nations. You probably recognize France under Napoleon, but... Prussia and Saxony don't usually get much love, so a brief overview. Overview: um, Prussia was the biggest German state and led Germany once it was unified until its dissolution in 1918. That's Prussia's dissolution, not Germany's. It also had a massive army compared to its population size. And Saxony was, it was just a small state of the Holy Roman Empire, so it wasn't too important. So the armies... The difference between these armies wasn't too great, but the difference between the generals was. So, on the Prussia's side, on Prussian side, they had three forces. 60,500 men were under Karl Wilhelm, 38,000 under Friedrich Ludwig, and 15,000 under Ernst von Ruschel. However, the Prussian army was still using tactics from Friedrich the Great, which were revolutionary at the time, but a little archaic at this point. Most of the Prussian generals were very old in the 60 to 70s range. Meanwhile, France had 116, yeah, 116,000 men under Napoleon at Napoleon at Jena, and around 47,000 troops in Austria under Bernadotte and Davo. So the Frenchmen loved their commanders, and they also had great unit co- communication. Unlike their Prussian forces, um, which if you look at Prussian history, they actually had quite a few. They had multiple people filling the same roles, which caused communication between the different divisions to be quite bad. Um, but let's start start off with the Battle of Jena. It started on the faded October day on the f- lush fields of Jena, when the French army started to harry the Prussian flanks. French General Saint Hilaire was actually able to break through on the Prussian left flank and isolated them away from the main body of Prussians. The French continued to take the initiative as Michael Ney charged without orders, into the Prussian center, leaving Napoleon's center open. Napoleon understood the danger Ney was in, and decided to send in Jean Lannes to relieve him. The emperor then shifted in his imperial guard to keep the French center stable. The big problem for the Russians, for the Prussians, sorry, um, was their inability to act. The French army was very weak, but they just couldn't capitalize, it, capitalize on it, and this ended up being their downfall. So realizing this, Napoleon charged the Prussian center while ordering troops to encircle the Prussian flanks. The French flanking force broke the Prussian flank divisions, and so the Prussian army had to withdraw. They ended up taking 10,000 casualties along the way and had 15,000 prisoners of war taken, along with 150 artillery guns. Now we can move on to the Battle of Osterdit. This twin battle started when French General Gudin's division were stopped outside of the town of Popel by, Fr- by Prussian cavalry and artillery. At this point, the persistent fog lifted, allowing French Marshal Davout to see the battlefield. He could see that Blucher and Schmadau's troops uh, were pushing Guden back to Hassenhausen. By 9.30, w- Wurtenschleben's infantry and cavalry arrived on Guden's left and right flank, respectively. General Louis, Louis Friant's 12 pounder artillery had also arrived and moved in on Guden's right. Wharton Schleben, uh, his cavalry, attacked Schmedow, and the Prussians started a full out attack on the town by this point. This left Schmedow and the Duke of Brunswick, both Prussian commanders, wounded and having to be escorted off the field. Eventually, as the battle was waning and the Prussians were doing pretty badly, uh, the Netherlands reinforcements arrived to aid the Prussians, but by then it was too late. They were two commanders down, and the king had to order a retreat. So at the end of this battle of Alderdud, uh, Davo lost 7,000 men, and the Prussians sustained 13,000 casualties. The aftermath of this was um, the Prussia was taken over by the French, and eventually later on, the Prussian army was reformed to modern standards at the time. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed this, and don't forget to, you know, whatever, like, subscribe, follow, whatever you can do, and I'll see you guys later. Adios.